One of my viewers sent a box filled with radioactive materials, such as americium-241 that's used in old fire alarms. And today we're gonna test it inside the cloud chamber. The cloud chamber is a physics tool that's used to observe background radiation, such as beta particles and alpha. Now you can also see some very rare tracks at times, if we're lucky. Now, the inventor was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1927 for this invention. I built a variation of it, a variation that runs on healthier devices, it's on electricity, and I'm using washer fluid that's negative 18 to cool down the healthier devices to make this black top plate negative 30. Now, with a saturated alcohol vapor, the tracks can appear. If you want to know more about the physics behind it, you can watch my build video. I explain a lot more in there. But today, we're unboxing the radioactive materials, and through this little hatch on the side, we'll be able to insert radioactive materials and see what kind of particles they emit. That's gonna be insane. We'll also be able to observe what kind of materials they can pass through. I did this in an earlier video where I observed that beta particles can go through paper while the heavier, larger alpha cannot travel through paper. We'll be able to test different materials to see if it stops the radiation. That's the idea. Okay, the first object is green glass, also called uranium glass. It's just slightly above background radiation, so it's considered pretty harmless. Now, he left a note that says, Johannes Fosch, that's a name, Glassworks 1920, a gift that might start a collection from Rickard. Thank you very much. We'll test it. These are tiny, but they are your watch dials, and they were usually luminescent by radium 226, and it says it's alpha, beta, and gamma. We'll test it. That's the good stuff, that's the americium-241. It's that tiny cell that was used in basically every fire alarm back in the days. Nowadays they use light. How boring. The green marble glass is uranium-238 and it was from a necklace. And lastly is a ceramic piece. I wonder what it is. It's uranium-238, a ceramic piece from Uppsala in Sweden from the 1930s. And it can emit alpha, beta, and gamma. We'll test it. So I brought in the Geiger counter and here's how it works. It counts the number of ion pairs formed inside the Geiger counter every 60 seconds. So the more clicks that you can hear, the more radiation is entering the Geiger counter. I opened up the backside of the Geiger counter to make it a little more sensitive, but the americium 241 is the only piece of radioactive material that I received that doesn't seem to be very radioactive at all. It should shoot off a beta and alpha particle, but the Geiger counter doesn't say it's more than background radiation. So let's try something else. This piece is also uranium-238, but way more radioactive. This piece was by far the most radioactive, so we should expect to see more activity from this uranium-238. But first, let me show you the background radiation inside the cloud chamber. As these two massive power supplies run electricity through the healthier devices on the bottom side of the cloud chamber, the washer fluid is pumped by just one pump through these heat blocks, and we have three healthier devices per section, which means as the washer fluid, that's negative 18 degrees Celsius, reaches the last heat block, it's already been heating up so much that we don't reach negative 30 on the cold plate. So I bought the second pump. You see, now we can divide the number of thermoelectric coolers each pump has to flow washer fluid through. Does that make sense? I'm also gonna wash off the windows. They were super dirty. Okay, here's the new improved cooling system. 
So there's one pump responsible for these two, and then there's a second pump responsible for this heat block. At the beginning, not much was happening, but as the cold plate reaches negative 30 degrees Celsius, the trails all of a sudden starts to appear. It's important to know, and mind-blowing at the same time, to know that we're not observing the particles themselves, but the path they have decided to take inside the chamber. The trails of condensation that you're watching right now was formed by a particle traveling through the alcohol vapor, possibly close to the speed of light. The beta particle is smaller and with less mass, so it's very faint, but often gets pushed around by the alcohol vapor, so the speed can vary from basically zero up to close to the speed of light. Because the alpha particle is larger and with greater mass, it leaves behind a brighter trail. This is what the background radiation looks like that's surrounding us all the time. Everywhere we go, we have this radiation around us, which is crazy to think about. The next day the washer fluid was negative 18 degrees Celsius again and for the very first time I inserted a small piece of the red ceramic with uranium-238 inside. The radioactivity is actually from natural uranium that was used to glaze pottery to give it a bright red color. These particles are subatomic and cannot be seen by any microscope, yet the energy the alpha particles transfer onto the vapor in order to be seen by the camera is just... A paint containing radium-226 was added to watch dials in order to make them luminescent. For the same reason, uranium glass became popular. It's so low radioactivity that it's considered harmless. I've tried the americium 241 a couple of times, it just doesn't seem to work at all. But luckily this house is from the 80s, and during the 80s they had better stuff. Cause take a look what I found hanging from the ceiling. Americium. There is a protective casing which is why the Geiger counter doesn't say there's any radioactivity, but if we do a little... PCBWay offers the best custom PCB prototyping services, but did you also know that they do injection molding, 3D printing, laser and CNC cutting? With their instant quote feature, you can simply upload your model, in this case a 54mm impeller for my electric surfboard. You can choose from SLA, FDM and SLM, which is a laser melting a metal powder to make metal parts. They also have an instant quote feature for their custom PCB, so go ahead and try it right now at PCBWay.com. And with this cell seemingly a lot more active, I stumbled upon another problem. There is one thing with this cloud chamber that I haven't been able to figure out, and that's at times I can't get the trails to appear. And there seems to be some kind of cascading avalanche effect. Now usually all I have to do is take something fluffy and rub it against the glass and it triggers the trails to appear. It's almost magical. But the last couple of times I haven't been able to get the trails to appear at all and I don't know why and it's so frustrating. I really, I can't, I can't get it. A power supply connected to the washer fluid pump, so now we can vary the voltage so we can increase the flow. Let's see if there's any tracks from the americium. There were some tracks, but it was just in the beginning. It's so weird. Have you missed my reviews? Okay, I'm just gonna sit. I've started the review channel and there are some videos to watch already. That's actually how I got started on YouTube and I wanted to bring that back, but on a secondary channel. Also, I've bought a house with a garage. I mean, a girlfriend. This was the garage just a couple of months ago. At this point, the ceiling and walls had been repaired and painted. After adding epoxy to the floor, it now looks like this. Okay, that's it for today's video. It doesn't always go as planned. If someone with a big brain can understand and comment why this doesn't work all of a sudden, I'd be thrilled. All right, see you again soon. Have an awesome day. Bye.
Welcome, Wire.